good morning students welcome to your computer class till date we have learned basic computer hardware and software in two chapters first chapter was numbers and second chapter was propositional logic hardware implementation and arithmetic operations now in your half yearly portion we have more seven chapters third chapter is introduction to op using java fourth chapter is objects fifth chapter is primitive values wrapper classes types and casting sixth chapter variables and expressions seventh chapter statements and scope eighth chapter methods and constructors and the last chapter string and arrays so you can understand these seven chapters or topics already we have learned in our icc syllabus so here we will only revise these chapters so each day we can complete one chapter like today we will start and complete chapter 3 that is introduction to op using java so let's start so first of all what is op this is the short form of object oriented programming which is a very popular programming methodology used nowadays to develop software many other programming methodologies are also there one of them is pop which was popular in earlier days c is a popular pop programming language so in pop a program consists of one or more procedures so procedure is main element of pop procedures are interdependent that means one procedure depends on another procedure for its execution you cannot independently execute a procedure in a program or in different program and many drawbacks are there in procedure oriented programming methodology that's why we use object oriented programming nowadays to design and develop real life program now come to object oriented programming in object oriented programming a program is broken into independent chunks known as object which can be integrated to create a complete program and can be used across various programs a large application program consists of components objects which interact with each other that means here in object oriented programming the main element is object which is a real life entity objects are independent not like pop's procedure which are interdependent object can be used in a same program or different program that means it increases the reusability of a code and here in object oriented programming we can hide some important data from the user so that user cannot tamper the data the important data in the sense the important for the program important for the programmer and the data which are not very important for the programmer but that is very important for the user to access the object that can be shown to the user and here we can create one object or entity from an existing object so this is another scope of reusability So object oriented programming has many important features and characteristics among them four are very important encapsulation abstraction inheritance and polymorphism so we will discuss each of these important features first of all encapsulation so this is a process of wrapping up of data and method into a single unit called class so here the main element of the program is what object and class is the object factory that means first you have to create class from where we can create object and class includes data and method into a single unit that means it wraps data and method into a single unit that's why it is called encapsulation encapsulation hides the irrelevant details of an object from the outside world that means from user what it is hiding the important features and characteristics of the class and it makes the class independent because when we are encapsulating something inside a single unit that can be used as a single entity in any program wherever you need to implement the things which is written in the class the next important feature of op is abstraction this is a process of presenting essential characteristics of an object without including the background details and explanation so background details and explanations are very important for the program and for the programmer that is kept hidden using the feature called encapsulation and the essential characteristics for the user to access the object or to use the object or to implement the object is shown to the user using the feature abstraction so encapsulation hides irrelevant details and abstraction shows the relevant details or presents the essential characteristics to the user so one is opposite of another encapsulation hides abstraction shows so let's take one real life example when we go to any atm counter to withdraw some money through the machine we as a user need to know how to operate the machine where to insert the card when to type the pin when to type the amount to be transacted these are the things shown to the user using the feature called abstraction but the complex process of authenticating a user and to count the money and to deduct the amount from your main balance that is kept hidden from the user 
so that process is called encapsulation next is inheritance inheritance is an another important feature which is a process of creating a new element from an existing element new element in the sense from an existing object or class so the new class which creates from existing class is called subclass or derived class and from which class we are creating the new class is called super class or base class so new class inherits the attributes and behaviors from the existing class or the super class and extend the functionality of that super class that means it implements the usability of op programming feature without rewriting the same code when we need to use the code which is already written in one class we can create my new class from that old class so new class will be the duplicate copy of that old class where we can add some extra feature and characteristics to make the class more special so that means new class inherits all the characteristics and behaviors of the old class the so old class means parent class and new class means child class like we inherits the characteristics and behaviors from our parents and we add some extra there to hold our own entity now next feature is polymorphism which is a process of defining more than one element with same name but they behave differently depending on what they are operating on so in class we encapsulate variables and methods into a single unit so in one class we can declare and define more than one methods with same name but they behave differently depending on what they are operating on so these are the main four characteristics and elements of op so today we have completed the introduction of op next day we will start chapter 4 and obviously we will finish that chapter so till our next class bye have a nice day